Hello and welcome to Separate Bathrooms. I'm Cam Daddo. I'm Ali Daddo. We've been doing this podcast for a while now. And given that we are in the bathroom, if you can imagine going into your bathroom cupboard and opening it up and you sort of go to the back of the cupboard and you pull out something. Oh my gosh, you found this watch that you thought you lost. Mm -hmm. This classic watch is there. Well, that's what we're doing today. We've gone back into the back catalogue of, of old episodes and we've uncovered a beauty. We have Jo Griggs and her husband, Todd. Jo is one of our favourite people. I, I, actually, I think she's one of Australia's favourite mm. people. Yeah. No one, no one does not like Jo Griggs. She's just divine. Well, she's so kind. She's so and kind. Fun and present and yeah. curious and just a good person. She's a good, good person. She married a good person and we love their love story. Yeah, have a listen. All right, thanks for having so us in welcome. the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's jump, let's jump right in. How did you guys meet? Uh, to be perfectly honest, um, Todd was going to move in to a house with my brother. Um, and to cut a long story short, I'd had a long distance relationship for a number of years. And when he had a chance to move home to, to actually live for the first time together, he chose to go to Scotland and the phone lines and the time of day and everything were terrible. So within about five weeks, we just made a mature decision just to, to break up and everyone in my family were kind of like, Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Except for my brother who was just like, Oh, you know what? It's it's it is a shame for you, except that I think it's the right thing to have happened because I've actually met the right person for you, and that's all he said. Wow. Um, and he didn't actually give me any more information. And then one day I was in the pool with the boys, and uh, and my brother walked in, and Todd walked in behind him, and I just thought he was so drop dead gorgeous that I just basically tried to stretch myself on the lilo to not look like I'd had two kids and um, <laughs> suck myself in and all sorts of places and. Uh, and because my brother took a phone call and walked away. So Todd, just being Todd, just started chatting away to the boys for ages and I uh, ended up staying for a drink and um, we just got on so well that at the end of it, I, I, in my head I was kind of panicking because I knew I wanted to see him again and I, so I just sort of suggested that he should come to my very famous Friday night um, dinner parties that I threw, which of course I never had thrown before. And my brother <laughs> thought that was hilarious. Um, nice. And Todd would come every week and we'd have the best conversation and we'd chat all night and then he'd just get to the end of the night and then he'd just go home. Like, I, I honestly thought I was throwing myself at him um, in just the most obvious way possible, but he missed every sign for a very long time. And then um, <laughs> And about sort of seven months, six months later, he actually left and I just thought, this is never going to happen. I'm just going to have to accept I'm in the friend zone. And he actually came back and he's like, we get on so well. Why, why, why don't we go out on a date? And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're finally, you're finally actually noticing me. That would be fantastic. I have been like holding a neon sign above me going, please notice me. And so he told me he'd bring me at uh, midday the next day and um, – as, you know, fate would have it, I got a phone call from the ex um, about 15 minutes earlier who just said I've made the biggest mistake of my life and I'm coming back to Australia and, uh, you know, we've never lived with each other and there's nothing wrong with our relationship. And so I kind of was so rattled by that phone call, I hung up and, of course, Todd rang straight after and he was just straight into a conversation about food and where we're going to go. So I kind of just tripped over my words to explain to him what had happened and got a response that I wasn't expecting and he just said, well, that's extraordinary. I know, you know, a very short synopsis version of it, but um, I picked you as somebody who had more self-respect and more self-esteem. Uh, and I was like, what? And he wow. just said, um, you know, if somebody had all those years with you and, and chose to move further away and have now worked out after all this time that there's nothing better out there, if they decide to come back and you decide to even consider it, um, I wish you all the happiness in your life. I just won't be a part of it and hung up. <laughs> <gasps> How did you feel doing that, Todd? I just thought that um, if he hadn't, if he hadn't like committed to the relationship before that, what's the use of like him trying again? That was a brave thing to say because you were kind of laying it all on the line in that moment, just going, "All right, this is what I feel. If you don't have enough self-respect in this moment." I'm out. You didn't want to chase or anything. It's very brave. That's Todd, though. That's Todd in a nutshell. Like, I think yeah. that's um, his character. Is He's very 
um, very authentic and very up and down and very black and white and he expects people to, if he trusts them, he expects them to trust him and if he does the right thing by them, he expects them to do the right thing by him. So his life is, I think, um, quite amazingly simple in that regard and it speaks volumes about his character Um, and, you know, it took a long time to to get him to actually um, come back. And he, if he wasn't going to move in with my brother, he actually he wouldn't have come back. But as it turned out, he never moved in with my brother. And we knew, uh, we knew within about a week um, of actually going on that first date, that very <laughs> long for first date, that, um, that we were going to get married. We just, and neither of us, we'd been married, both of us, and we didn't want to get married again, but it just felt like it was going to be the right thing to do. Todd, you, um, you stepped into a stepfather role. How, how was that? Yeah, look, it was, it's been great from day one. I don't know, it just seemed quite a, like a seamless process, to be honest here. The boys and I got on like a house on fire. Um, I, I love kids and it just seemed quite a, a natural fit straight away. And, you know, how, how difficult or is it difficult the transition of marrying someone with kids? I know. I never really thought about it to be honest. One of my main attractions uh, to Jay was uh, what a beautiful mum she was, and how attentive yeah. she was, and caring and loving. And I thought that was magnificent. So, yeah, it's you did. You did life. have to teach me though, Toddy, because he, he used to say to me, "I was so used to doing everything just as one person, considering everything, doing everything, doing the finances, running my days, um, running the boys' days. You know, everything was so regimented and organised because it had to be because I was also working full-time. And, and I remember so every now and then Todd would say, so what's what's the plan for you know, this day or this weekend? And, and so I'd just run through it all. And he'd just very quietly say, oh, that's great. He said, have you ever considered it a plan where maybe two people were part of making that decision? <laughs> 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 and it was just a really nice way of going, hey, listen, control freak, you're actually going to have yeah. to realise there's two of us in this relationship. But, it, you know, he, he always does it in a way that it kind of stops you in your tracks and makes you have a laugh and then you realise, okay, I'm sorry, it's, I'm actually the one you're going to have to train here. It's not the boys. They, they are, kids are amazing. They adapt um, incredibly. But it, it was definitely me learning, having to learn how to um, let someone in and to give up some of that control. Yeah. yeah. That is tricky, though, as a mum, I and mean, particularly, as you say, as a single mum, you know, you yeah. even married to Cam, sometimes I've got to learn to give up control because I'm so used <laughs> to managing the three kids and this goes here and that goes there. And Cam's like, well, I can help. And I'm like, well, what do you mean you can help? I have it all organised. <laughs> <laughs> What yeah, um, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Todd, um, just, just the last thing, you know, there's a lot of people in, in, who are coming into families that already have kids. What advice or do you have any thoughts on what advice you would give those people that are having difficulty or anything like that? Oh, look, I, when I came into the relationship, I just said to the boys straight away that, They've got a father. I'm not their father, but I'll be a role model and their father model. Um, so I'm not trying to replace anybody. And yeah. that sort of made it work quite simple. I was just there as another a new part of their life rather than trying to replace something. Um, that's sort of all. I don't know what else to say about that, to be honest with you. You're so brute consistent um, and he provided a lot of stability from a male figure that we hadn't sort of had in, in any of our lives, to be perfectly honest. And, um, you know, I can always remember going away to a Winter Olympics uh, and this is before we got married, so we'd been dating and, and it was early on. And, you know, I was ringing home every day talking to mum about the boys and I was ringing Todd every day and no one mentioned anything. But when I came back, Todd had made a point of going to our house every day to either have a swim with the boys, kick a footy with the boys, help them with their homework um, just hang with them, you know, watch TV, play a game. And I, you know, I didn't find out until I got home and I was so touched that he, that he would do that. And he said, but he, it was very important that the boys understood that he wasn't, he wasn't just here for me, um, that he was going to be there for them. And it started right from the get go. And I, I still think it's one of the most amazing things that, and the fact that my mom didn't let it sleep is a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> what, she doesn't what, usually keep a secret all that well. <laughs> <laughs> What's your relationship like now, Todd, with the, now that they're grown men? 
Oh, it's really good, actually. Yeah, um, Joe Buster, he works for me, so he, he works underneath me. Um, we have a, quite a good relationship because we see each other every day. Um, Jesse, I don't see, we don't see as often because he li- he's living in Queensland at Cairn, Cairns at the moment. So, But, no, we have great relationships and, um, yeah, we've just got on really, get on really well still. And now that now you're co-grandparents together, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my my image of grandparents is not what you two are. No. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I wake up most days to Toddy playing videos of Jack's or um, looking at photos of him because he's just it's just brought this element to our life that we just could never. I mean, you hear it and it's so cliche, but you never could imagine just how much love and joy just that little you know, little being can give and, and bring into all of our lives. Um, you know, he's, he's just the sweetest, funniest, cutest little munchkin. And, and, and you know, we're very lucky. Um, Joe has everything set up at our place because he lives with mates and that way Katie never has to worry about, you know, Jack's going back to a batch pad. So we get to share, you know, all of his access time with him and, and, uh, and Jack's. And, you know, it's just, I reckon it's the, the highlights of our week every week. <laughs> Aww, that's gorgeous. You know, as far as work-life balance, I know, Joe, you do a lot of travelling. How do you balance um, the, your schedules with each other? Do you get enough time with each other? How do you make that work? I think, yeah, at the moment, definitely through COVID, it's been, to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest, we've both loved it. Um, I've only had, I think, one interstate trip in the last couple of months, whereas, you know, there's been years and years where I can travel sort of six or eight flights a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and that actually requires, I, I think, a partner who is um, incredibly trusting and incredibly confident in their own skin just to be able to play on because you, you miss out on lots of things or lots of events or going to things. I think probably the best and biggest thing that we did was about 14 years ago we bought um, a rural property and that has a lot of appeal to both of us. We love entertaining. We love having it full of family and friends. Um, we grow like 80% of our veggies and we've got bees and you know, Todd's got his tractor and his excavator and just even even the trigger when we're both driving up here, um, it just makes us really relax. And so I think I think we make a very conscious effort to to make time for each other. I mean, there's we talk to each other about fifty times a day. I reckon most days, and yeah. um, you know, we we you know definitely try not to be apart unless we have to be. And uh, and I think I think just having that to me that work life balance is definitely something that we both you know we dream that we'll eventually retire um, uh, you know out there, and. It just it it brings us a calmness to our life, um, and so you know if people come and visit, that's great. But when they leave, we also have this moment where we look at each other and we're just like, oh, fantastic! Now it's just the two of us again. So I think that's been a really um, really important thing for both of us. Would you yeah. agree, Toddy? Yes, definitely. Are you just I, saying uh, that because I, I asked I you? Speak <laughs> as as Obviously, you you understand that part about us. <laughs> You um you mentioned just before we started that you you both shifted a, a whole bunch of soil today. Is that a is that a usual thing for you guys? How often do you do things like that together? Uh, Quite surprisingly, we do. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff like this together, like yeah. a lot at the farm. Joe and I work really well together. Uh, as long as she knows I'm in charge, it's no problem. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. I've been sacked. I've been sacked off site twice from him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, where where I, I was flirting with the boss, a bit of lip. Joe. That's why. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't flirting. I was giving the boss a bit of lip, and then when <laughs> he uh, he actually turned out to be correct that I was doing something incorrectly, he just very calmly just said, uh, "Thank you for your time today. You can leave," <laughs> which meant that I knew I was in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Todd, I need some tips from you, man. <laughs> yeah, mate, we, all, we all need tips. <laughs> Speaking of tips, um, all right, so you've been together 15 years. What are some romance tips that you might be able to give some people out there listening? Oh, I can't wait to hear this, Todd. Yeah, you're on, <laughs> oh, Todd. Oh, is that for me? Is that one for me? Is that <laughs> yes, that's for you, that's mate. For you, Todd. My, my idea of romance is moving 15 tonne of soil and then planting uh, a heap of turf down. So today's been beautiful. So <laughs> <laughs> 
right, Don't you agree, Joe? <laughs> I actually did love today, but um, I reckon I reckon communication a hundred percent is the most important thing, and uh, and for us, laughter like we've got to enjoy every day, and we do enjoy every day. Um, and for me, my other big one is food. Like I feel like, um, like I know Todd loves eating and I love cooking and I feel like it's the best way that I can show how much I appreciate him and value him and respect him is to just create kick-ass food the whole time for him so that, um, you know, he very rarely has to eat the same meal, you know, twice in, I don't know, a couple of months. So um, yeah. I feel like that's that's the effort that I go to just to, to, to make him understand. I would say romance is probably... Not Toddy's strong point. Um, it's not that he doesn't, <laughs> that he doesn't oh, intend oh. to. He's just on, like, we're just on, wired, <laughs> we are wired so differently on that front. Like he's just hilarious. And I, I mean, we, we have every now and then he'll say, you know, you know, I do really love you. I have no question in my mind about that. But if I was expecting um, like flowers and romance, like it, yeah, it's not. I think you'd agree, Toddy, it's probably not your strong point. Yeah, no, it's not my strong point at all. <laughs> I was gonna say Sorry. here's your here's your right of reply, Todd. You get to you get to <laughs> say that's <laughs> absolute crap, Joe. Nah, she got it exactly right, unfortunately. <laughs> she you was so, she's such a romantic and I'm the opposite, so are you are you a barbecue do I, chef? Do, do, you, do you do stuff with the barbecue or any of that sort of stuff? Look, my idea of the barbecue is if I if we've got people over, or I get someone else to cook it. That's the best thing. I'm I'm not a cook, um, unfortunately. I only has, I only do the barbecue if I have to. So Joe's too good at what she does. Awesome. <laughs> hey, so guys, you, you Joe, you mentioned COVID before. Before, yeah. Mental health, or um, it's on a lot of people's radar at the moment. You you sit on the board of, of Beyond Blue. Now, I mean, sometimes we all get down in the dumps. What are a couple of things that you guys do to raise your mood? Exercise, I think, is one of the, the simplest and easiest ways. Like, I mean, we all know endorphins, um, they get released from exercise. It can actually be a mindset and a a trigger for change that you can actually, even if you're you know, dreading going out the door and doing something, that is something that, that you know, I think is really important. Um, some kind of meditation. So for me, like a, the veggie patch or out gardening or even do what we did today with you know, moving all the soil on 450 square metres of turf, it's amazing how when you, you're surrounded by nature, um, how it has an impact without you even realising it. But then when you're actually physically doing things, you, you actually, without realising it, use that time to think and to, you know, feel like you're being productive and to um, feel like you've achieved something, which are, which are all really small little shifts in, um, you know, if, if somebody's feeling down, they can make a massive difference to how they feel by the time they put their head in the pillow to go to sleep. So um, I think the nature thing for us is a really big one. We we like spending time with our cows. I love spending time with the bees. Um, we caught a swarm on Sunday and Todd very bravely came and filmed it from, for me. And um, So just little little things like that. I mean, they, they sound ridiculous, but doing things that you enjoy. So another thing for me would be cooking. For Todd, it would be, I don't know, PlayStation. He gets to play about once every two weeks. Now I've got, to call, I've, got to, I've got to call time out here because you can't you can't tell Todd what he's what he's uh... yeah true 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 <laughs> want... well she can if she wants <laughs> no 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 I want to hear <laughs> that's how it works um, I, I I just like coming up to the farm is a real good thing for us it's it's really grounding and you get out you work all week and then you come up to the farm on the weekends you're still working but it's a little bit different so to me that that's sort of resets everything from the stressful week or what has been happening at work. Once you get here, like, you know, no one, the animals, the farm doesn't care about what's been happening. So it's a good reset button and just get out in the tractor and do stuff like that. It's really, really therapeutic. I was going to ask you, what is your favourite uh, farm equipment? Oh, that's a toss-up, actually. I've got an excavator and a tractor, so... Uh, it's like kids. You can't pick one. You can't say who's the favourite. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we've got motorbikes as well, so we go riding on motorbikes and stuff like that. So, uh, three kids. Yeah, sounds like Nirvana. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Um, do you spend a lot of time apart? It seems like you probably would. Not, not, not through COVID. Well, not um, through COVID, yeah. Yeah, but, but normally. Generally. 
yeah, generally we're, if I'm, I've got my travel schedule as full on as it usually is, yeah, we do. We spend lots of time apart. But, um, you know, like it's just part of the job. It's always been that way. So I think we, we've gone into that eyes open of knowing. And, you know, we don't ever have, even if I'm travelling, uh, I'm usually talking to Todd on the way to the airport and then when I land and definitely before I go to sleep and he's, he's the same. So we, we just... I think that's the biggest thing. We keep lines of communication open all the time. And sometimes, like, I he goes to bed much earlier than I do. Um, so it's just something as simple as a text just to say, night, I love you. So um, I think that's – this is important for us that we uh, we really don't go through periods where we don't speak to each other or we don't, you know, talk to each other or if we don't see each other, we make more of an effort to communicate. Has your um, job being on the board of Beyond Blue, do you think that that's helped you communicate better with Todd, knowing how important it is that, you know, that can be a way that mental health can really be affected if you if you sort of internalise everything? To be honest, I think it's probably more from, I was really crook at 17 and the, the lessons that I learned about myself and about human nature um, and about how when people are scared or they're not sure um, you know, what things are or how long they're going to last for, they generally just shy away from them. So I actually feel like uh, I guess the em- empathetic qualities that I have in relation to mental health actually were from back then. Right. And I also come from a really strong family of communicators. Like my mum and my sisters and brother, I mean, they're extraordinary. And, and I think when you've grown up with that, it, it, it's, it's something that you're quite aware of anyhow. Being on the board of Beyond Blue for the last six years, I've just learned so much more about so many things like one I didn't realize just how many things they were involved in and you know the man at the moment the demand is just extraordinary and we've never experienced anything like it before and and I I feel like we're at the tip of what's going to be a really hard couple of years ahead because you know once JobKeeper ends there's going to be even more financial concerns there's small businesses there's a lot of them that are struggling to survive Um, there's financial pressure there's you know a lot of people they're not in a safer spot just where they are at home anyhow and particularly in lockdown so um, on top of the trauma of the bushfires and the fears and the and the fatigue about COVID-19 and this is something we could be dealing with you know worst case scenario for another couple of years I think you just become more aware and I spend every moment that I can just trying to get the messages out there just to, to get people to realise don't wait till crisis point to get the help you need. I mean, if, if it is at crisis point, still reach out. But there's so much more that you can do um, early on with early intervention and and take steps to, to actually reach a point of recovery. So I think that's the, the, the main message is we just constantly try to tell people and let them know. Yeah, it's a fantastic message. We do a segment. It's called the two-minute shower. Just do quick answers, basically. That's what it means. It's it's quick answers to a few questions that we have for you. You want to go for the first question, honey? Sure. So both of you will answer whoever wants to go first, but we'll we'll get both your answers if possible. All right, here we go. You go go first, Todd. We're in the shower together. Here we go. Ready. (laughs) Who is your biggest inspiration in life? (laughs) <laughs> it's got to be quick, doesn't it? Well, I don't um, have to be that quick. We've got, we've got some time. Biggest inspiration in life. Oh, I, I like Sir Alex Ferguson. He's a, a, Manchester, a former Manchester United uh, coach. He's just an inspirational figure. Cool. Joe? Mine would be my mum. Beautiful. Okay. What do you think people notice most about you? My earlobes. Earlobes. <laughs> They're very sexy, especially on this. You can't zone. see because I've got the little buds in. But yeah. oh, I can see them, mate. I can see them. Oh yeah, thank <laughs> you. Have you ever noticed your earlobes? <laughs> oh, thanks. You're the first person not to say it. <laughs> Mine would be that I'm really tall, and I hear that about a hundred times a week. Oh my god, you're so tall. Uh, yes. Joe, can I tell you? I feel your pain. <laughs> You're a lot taller in real life, aren't you, mate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. So true. Okay, what is your biggest weakness? Ooh. Am I going first, Joe, on this one? Yeah. I'm letting okay. you go first for all of them because, you know, I right, hate, okay. I'm hopeless with short answers. Okay. Um, food's my biggest weakness. Food. food, like advertising for food. If I see something advertised, I need to eat it. <laughs> It's, it's true. He's a marketer's dream. Uh, 
my biggest weakness, um, I'm very hyperactive and so sometimes I just rush into things without giving it the consideration that I should. Mm. Okay, question four. High school, awesome or terrible? <laughs> uh, awesome for me. I wasn't there much, but when I was there it was awesome, but I didn't have a huge amount of secondary education. All right. I don't know if this applies to either of you, but what's the best adjective that best describes you when you're drunk? Hmm. Loose. <laughs> it's not adjectives though, is it? But that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> no, Ryan. <problem. laughs> See, I would say, Todd, that yours would be funny and mine would be jolly. Oh. I, I, get, I get one of those silly little people that just grin incessantly. Okay, number one biggest pet peeve. I haven't really got one, to be honest with you. No gasoline in the tractor? Oh, <laughs> Joe, actually, my biggest pet peeve. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> is, is Joe doing some damage to my car? <laughs> happens all the time. All the time. All the time. It really does. It's like I'm jinxed around his car. Um, mine would be ungrateful people. Mm, mm. That's a good one. Is it okay to sleep with socks on? If it's cold. <laughs> My body temperature runs at a million degrees. I would not be able to sleep with socks on. <laughs> I usually have like one leg hanging out the side of a doona. <laughs> True or false? Opposites truly attract. True. True. Yeah. Okay. AFL or NRL? NRL. Mm, that's hard. I like both of them, but NRL at the moment would be my favourite. Okay. Ali. Oh, it was meant to be you. Oh, was it? Okay. I just did that one. I'm just doing the question, actually. Comfortable silences <laughs> or non-stop <laughs> conversation? I like comfortable silences. I've got no problem with that. Yeah. I like comfortable silences with Todd because I've had to get used to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this, I love this one. One word to describe each other. Beautiful soul. Well, that's two, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we'll hide I would in. say generous. Todd is generous with his time. Oh, I, was with his... About, I was talking about myself, sorry. <laughs> oh, he's talking about ourselves. No, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about yourself. You would have stopped him beautiful. <laughs> 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 Ooh, drop the camera. Growing up, home and away or neighbours? Home and away? Only because of Inga. <laughs> You're an idiot. So, Cam, you might not know, but I played Inga from Sweden, who was a Swedish backpacker that was going to try to steal Bobby's husband on home and away. In one episode, and Todd thinks it's hilarious. Um, do you not know this? Home and away for me, but not because of that. <laughs> <laughs> you would have stepped on Bobby. She was tiny. <laughs> she didn't even come up to the bottom of my breast. It was so bad. <laughs> I love that. Um, and last question. It, does, it can be more than one word. What's a way that you show each other kindness? Do you want to go first there, Joe? I would say uh, through food. Yeah. I thought you might say that. <laughs> Mine's through affection. <laughs> nice cuddle classic. every now and then. <laughs> Sometimes oh, you guys I stroke be... Joe's hair, you know. <laughs> you would never. That's such a lie. I love him to death. He's got a lot of great qualities. But I actually came home once with hair extensions that were like down to honestly – my midriff and I go said to Todd and Joe, I was there for about three hours just cooking in the kitchen. And I said to them, Hey guys, have you noticed anything different about my hair? And Joe looked at me and he said, I know there's something. I just can't really put my finger on it. And Todd stared at me for a while and he went, no, you look exactly <laughs> the same as when you left. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you do love them, don't yeah. we? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Uh, you guys have been fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for being being with us today. It's oh, always been fun. Problems. Thank you. It's so delightful to be uh, talking with you and, and you can literally feel the love between you oozing over the microphone. I know um, 
Joe, we've only met once before, but even then the way you spoke about Todd was just so delightful. You, you could really tell how much you loved him just by, you know, you can tell us how you love, much you love someone when they, how they talk about them behind their back. Yes. And you're always, so, <laughs> you're always so lovely about him. It was just so nice. So thank you both so much. You are so thank welcome. Thank you, guys. I, just, I reckon that's the other key to a successful relationship, having respect for each other. And I think that's yes. one thing that we definitely both have for one another. Yeah. Right. It's beautiful. All right, guys. We will, uh, we'll see you soon, okay? Yeah. Thank Thanks, guys. Really appreciate Ta-da. it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye for now. Oh, what a fabulous, fabulous couple. I loved them. Salt of the earth. Yeah. Toss a ripper. Right? Gardening, communication. Laying lawn. Yes. Gratitude. Food. Food. Cooked by the wife. (laughs) Yeah, she sounds like a really good cook. Right? Yeah. I'm going to take some tips, I think. (laughs) Some marriage tips too. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Separate Bathrooms. We'll be back very soon with another episode. Thanks for listening. <laughs>